high clouds hovered over the Anaheim Convention Center in Southern California during this year's Haley Expo Convention and Trade Show. But despite forecasts of economic doom and gloom, the atmosphere was largely sunny inside the show hall. The annual event, sponsored by Helicopter Association International, brings together rotorcraft businesses, operators, and enthusiasts for a once-a-year gathering unrivaled anywhere else in the world. The 2009 event was held against a more somber backdrop than in years past, as concern about the global financial crisis permeated the show floor. While the rotorcraft segment hasn't felt the economic sting to the extent other aerospace industries have so far, that doesn't mean helicopter manufacturers aren't suffering from the fallout of the collapse of worldwide financial markets. Frank Robinson is founder of Robinson Helicopter Company, which builds and sells the most civilian helicopters of any company in the world. Robinson says his company has been affected by customers unable to obtain financing for their new aircraft. The R-44 and R-22 have both been performing very well. We get a lot of really good feedback on them. And we had a whole lot of sales of them, except that right now we can't deliver a lot of those orders and sales that we have because they can't get any financing out there to, to buy them. And that is really hurting. Given those statements, this might seem to be an odd time to unveil a new product. But Robinson did exactly that on the last day of Healy Expo 2009. At a customer reception at the company's headquarters in Torrance, California, Robinson gave the first public showing of its new turbine-powered R-66 helicopter. Powered by a compact Rolls-Royce RR300 turbine, the five-passenger R-66 may not look very different to anyone familiar with Robinson's popular four-place R-44 helicopter, but the turbine model is actually quite a bit larger and, of course, more powerful than its piston-engined predecessor. Frank Robinson says the helicopter will fill a hole in the market created by the erstwhile and recently discontinued Bell 206 line. Robinson expects the R-66 to be certified by this time next year, but isn't stating a firm goal. As for price, well, Frank isn't saying a lot about that either. I can give you the firm price. It's going to fall somewhere between the R-44 Raven 2, which is 400000 roughly, and the last price for the Bell Jet Ranger, which was, I don't know, $1.2 million or thereabouts. So it'll be right, in, it'll be right down in that, in that bracket. When we come back, some perspective on the history of commercial rotorcraft from someone very close to its origin. You're watching Aero TV. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. Walking the exhibition floor at Healy Expo 2009 in Anaheim, surrounded by flashy manufacturer displays and such impressive machinery, it's hard to believe the commercial helicopter segment is less than 70 years old. It was 1942 when a Ukrainian inventor named Igor Ivanovich Sikorsky produced the first production helicopter, the R-4. When would the helicopter go faster than the airplane? Do you know that? I said, yes, I know. The answer is never. When would the helicopter be more efficient than the aeroplane? You know that? I also said, yes, I know that. Never. But I said that the helicopter will do a number of jobs which no aeroplane will do, and which in fact nothing else will do except the helicopter. Igor Sikorsky passed away in 1972, about the time the company that bears his name truly started coming into its own as a builder of advanced commercial and civilian rotorcraft. Today, Sikorsky Aircraft and competitors like Eurocopter, Bell, MD Helicopters, and Robinson continue to offer a wide range of helicopters catered to a wide variety of roles. During Healy Expo 2009, Sergei Sikorsky shared his thoughts about what inspired his father to pursue his dream of flight, first in fixed-wing aircraft and later with helicopters. At a very early age, he was influenced by the rediscovery of Leonardo da Vinci's lost manuscripts, including this very, very famous uh, sketch of a helicopter. Dad, at the same time, was absolutely enthralled by a very great Frenchman named Jules Verne, 
And Jules wrote a book called Rover the Conqueror, in which with tremendous, you want to call it psychic accuracy, he described a helicopter. Described the use of this helicopter in flying, making rescues, uh, plucking people from burning buildings and sinking ships. Quite literally, uh, a vision that would turn out to be very true. I submit to you, this is that point in time, Da Vinci, Jules Verne, where this young 10 and 11 year old boy started his love affair with the helicopter. Officials with Sikorsky proudly noted the company recently completed an unprecedented wave of new aircraft introductions, with seven new models test flown over the past year, all slated for introduction within the next 36 months. Igor would be proud. Coming up next, scenes from the exhibition floor at Healy Expo 2009. You've heard of this thing called WAS, right? The wide area augmentation system lets you fly GPS glide path approaches without relying on ground-based landing aids. No VOR, no ILS, no problem. Fact is, WAS is so smart, it even knows what you're going to say next time you need it. And don't have it on board. Wah, wah, I want my WAS now! I was really crying there for a second. Thank you. 